It is absolutely insane how much is wasted every day all across the country, all across the world from restaurants, dining halls, food processing facilities. This is the norm. Lots of nutrient-filled material turning into garbage. But in this video, we're gonna show you how to turn garbage back into food. We're up at 1,700 feet on Standard Mountain in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. We're on historically unceded Abenaki tribal land. This is the region of the Nelhagen Band. Vermont discards enough food to grow roughly 20,000 acres of mixed vegetables annually organically. Um, and that is somewhere between 50 and 100% of what it would take to feed the state depending on how your diet is configured. My name's Tom Gilbert and I'm the owner and operator of the farm with a crew of, of 10 folks collecting food scraps, foraging laying hens, making compost and worm castings, and growing crops on the backside. Black Deer Farm is a full cycle integrated farm. So specifically the farm being designed after the carbon cycle is an effort to you know, mitigate the release of carbon into the atmosphere and sequester it into soil and crops. Uh, but also to capture those resources for the local food system to make that more robust and resilient. And lastly, to just build in an internal accountability to the community where we make sure that we handle our own materials and that we don't somehow cause an impact in other communities by sending them to landfills that will impact drinking water, surface water, and other aspects of human and ecological health. You know, one of the ironies in, in all of these things is that many of the places where there are incinerators or landfills happen to also be food insecure communities. And so it's this double insult of, you know, we don't make resources adequately available here and yet we're asking you to bear the burden of all of the rest of society's pollution. And getting these systems right, getting in the right relationship with carbon is also about getting in right relationship with each other from individual to individual, but community to community. To me, what, what I see in somebody's container of rotting material that they may think of as smelling bad uh, and being gross, you know, we, we really see that as, uh, that's our bread and butter, you know, that's, that's everything else is sort of built off of that material. So the, the first thing that sets off our, our chain of enterprises on the farm is we go off of the farm and drive a truck with a 10 yard dump trailer around all the surrounding communities around here. We pick up from about 100 plus businesses and schools, trailers full and we come back to the farm. We tip the food scraps here and then we blend those food scraps with what we call hot mix. It's a blend of other compostable materials, a bunch of different carbon materials, which are the energy source to, to balance the, the protein source in the food scraps and in the manure. When that blend is made, we bring it up to temperature first to scrub the pathogens out of it. Then we bring it down to lay hens and give it to them to scratch through. And basically what they're doing is kind of fulfilling their ecological destiny, their sort of natural foraging habit, which is to scratch the forest floor. And then once the hens have uh, their shot at foraging that and capturing the energy and the protein from that material, whatever they don't eat, we bring out here to the compost pad and the material starts on the far end here and then works its way this way. So these piles are getting turned and literally they will kind of creep across the, the pad and eventually end up at the screen and go through the screen and then come in here to the finishing shed um, where they finish curing and then eventually out to the retail area or get loaded directly into trucks. One of the challenges with a small farm is arriving at that place where there's a balance between your costs and your revenues. And for us, an important part to this is figuring out how to limit or mitigate input costs. So grain is expensive. If we're bringing food scraps in that we're getting paid a fee for to, to handle for somebody, we're bringing in feed not just for free, but at a net revenue. So we've, uh, we've kicked off the, the process of feeding hens in a, in a net positive way that allows us to operate a smaller flock than somebody who's just a strain grain flock might need to be operating at. And, you know, and then along the way, just like the carbon, we're capturing additional value at each step. So we're really dragging this out and, and squeezing 
each, uh, each dollar out of each of those uh, carbon molecules. We're trying not to waste carbon, we're trying to be really efficient with money though. So this is our, our worm bin, and this is where we bring in a variety of maturities of compost and feed the worms with that. This product is ultimately, it's gone through the, um, the heating process out there to hit the organic standard, and then we bring it in here and cool it down really fast, which helps us retain more of the nitrogen. And then we use the worms to manipulate the soil food web so that we can start creating a unique biological finished product. And the worms basically act like a starfish in a tidal pool and manipulate the other organisms through eating and other forms of foraging. And this bin is what's called a flow-through bin, so it's, it's designed, like the rest of our operation, to mimic the natural habitat of these, these organisms and their tendencies. And then the bottom of this bin is a grate, and there's a motor on that end and that motor has a looped cable that uh, has a, a cutting bar that sits on these bottom rails and just cuts off the bottom half inch. And so, so we're always filling from the top and taking off from the bottom. It takes about three and a half months for the material to move through the bin. And then we dry it on the ground and then run it through the screen. Uh, we sell several different size bags. Uh, we sell something as small as a two quart bag that might be like a stored under your sink and use it on your houseplants bag and that retails for about 10 bucks. And then we sell all the way up to cubic yard sling sacks and those retail for about 1600 bucks. One of the things that I think inspires us to specifically build a farm system that that's built around handling food scraps and then replenishing soil and growing crops and another food is, you know, ecologically, that's, that is the necessary cycle to reestablish in the food system. It, it reflects that, the circular nature of the carbon cycle and the, the fundamental pathway and, and uh, relationship of carbon in the system that will allow us to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. So just imagine this same idea multiplied thousands of times outside every town and city, farms taking all of the food waste, the garbage of the city, and turning it into beautiful, fertile compost.